Hello, I'm Diana Lynn, co-founder and director of the Heartland Song Network, and I'm joined today by Ivory Blue, an artist from right here in Kansas City that has agreed to serve as our Artist of the Month for January 2023. Thank you so much for joining us today. Where where are oh, you? Thank you? Are you here in town? I'm in the, I live outside of Kansas City, about 45 minutes away. I appreciate, I appreciate your time today. I've got lots of questions, but I wanted to try to focus in on a couple of areas because one of the first things that we did uh, honoring you as the artist of the month was share uh, an interview that you had done with Canvas Rebel that goes into some detail about your past and and how you've gotten to where yeah. where you are creatively. I don't necessarily want to rehash yeah. that, but I, I am interested in what you consider to be your musical education. Are you classically oh. trained in, in any way or are you self-taught? I'm self-taught mostly. Um, when I was younger, um, I picked up the guitar and I started playing around with chords and stuff. And my parents, my foster parents at the time were like, you know what, let's give you lessons, you know? So I ended up getting a lesson from somebody that lived around town, but he only showed up to one lesson the other lessons like he never showed up. So I've had like one guitar lesson. Um, when I moved to Kansas City, I started getting some uh, vocal lessons from uh, Mindy Hart. And uh, she started teaching me how to breathe right because that's one thing I really struggle with is breathing and you know singing and being able to have that breath before you sing a really long note. So she taught me how to do that. And uh, I don't know, it just made me a better better vocalist, I think. So well, I, yeah, I, kind of taught myself, kind of didn't. I, I hear that a lot, that, that I don't know whether it's just mm -hmm. the lack of, um, you know, educational facilities here in towns or in the heartland where they've, uh -huh. where they've taken so much music education out of the public schools. And if you, oh, yeah. you know, if you want to really dig down and get some very basic music education, it seems like you have to yeah. rely on private lessons or get out there on YouTube and, you know, figure it out, figure yeah. it out yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if, yeah. you, if you could wave a, a magic wand and uh, take some lessons or, or advance your music education, where, where would you go with that? What would you want to do? I would I would like to learn to play the piano. That's that's one thing I like to do. Like uh when I record my music like uh for Starlet Love Child, I just played around with the lead that was on the synth part, you know, the synth part that I played. Um the do 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 do. It's really easy to play <laughs> cuz it's a pattern. You know, I can do patterns, but when it comes to chords and stuff like that, I can't do chords. So I would love to learn how to play chords on piano. I think the thing about a piano, though, is I'm not a musician, so I do not know where have I uh -huh. on this. But a piano is a is a large, cumbersome instrument that, except for an electric, yeah. you know, an electric piano is, is pretty yeah. mobile. But I, I do hear a lot of songwriters, oh, yeah. a, a lot of songwriters start their songwriting process on the piano and then, you know, switch it mm -hmm. to the guitar or whatever. Uh, so that's, that's, yeah. that's good to know or interesting to know that you would, mm -hmm. would like to, to do the piano or like to learn how to play the piano. Um, yeah. Tell us about um, your style of collaboration. Are you kind of a lone wolf or do you like to collaborate with other people? I, I collaborate. Um, uh, when I write, like I get the drums um, and I get the guitar parts and I get the vocals and I get the bass, I get it all on there for a demo. And then I outsource it to uh, Craig Q who plays bass. He comes in and he plays the bass like he plays and he puts it on the song. And then I outsource the drums to Lester Estelle. He's a drummer from Kelly Clarkson. You probably know about him um he uh he puts the drums from his studio onto the songs as well is this a process that you started before the pandemic or became more yeah 
more prevalent during the pandemic because you couldn't get together in the same physical space and collaborate with someone. Yeah. You had to figure it out. This is something that you've been doing all along. Yeah, this is something I've been doing since Ready Get Set. Um, Ready Get Set was released in 2015, so I've been doing that since 2015. Another one I want to mention collaborating with is uh, Mark Kuffner. He's a uh, he's a orchestral like he plays like uh like strings and stuff like on the computer, and he makes it sound like a real orchestra. It's really cool. So I have a song called Bright Lights that he uh he helped me produce and it sounds really cool and I'm really excited to share it. I, I'm, I'm struck how, I don't know whether professional is the right word, but how creative mm -hmm. and artistic your videos are that accompany oh. songs. How do you decide mm -hmm. to collaborate with for the visual side of representing your music? Well, I think, uh, I think you just see their work and you're like, wow, that looks really cool. I'd love to work with that person. So you end up working with them. I th I think it's that easy where it's just you see what they do and you love it and you just want to see if you can incorporate that into your own style. And you find that those folks are open to being approached in that in that way for that purpose. They're OK. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say you, you don't know till you ask, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't sound like you're afraid. To, you're, you're afraid to ask. Um, no. What does a typical day look like for you? Like, what what are you working on right now? I'm working on my show for uh, March 16th. It's going to be a looping show. Um, I'm also going to have some tracks in the background. I'm going to play to some, like that song, Bright Lights, is going to be um, played as well. It's going to have strings and stuff. So I'm going to have that in the background as well. I work on that. It's a almost a two hour show. So I just started working on that on that about two weeks ago. And um is that a show that's gonna be here locally that we can Yeah. It's gonna be at Eula KC in oh, yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. what is it that you I, I was wondering I, there's three particular songs that I play on my radio show on KKFI quite a bit. I wonder if, if maybe mm -hmm. I can get a little bit of the backstory on, on these songs. Sure. Um, sure. I love Elite Dreamland. I love, Sonic you. I, I love sonically how it's really stripped down and it's acoustic and, um, yeah. you know, how the hell do I get back to me sort of? Yeah. To mm -hmm. it. What's, what's yeah. the backstory on that song? Well, I was writing it about um, just like you said, getting back to me. It was, it was kind of a, I felt a little lost, you know, I felt like I was going through a really hard time and the only way I could express it was I really want to be somewhere else. And Elite Dreamland is this place where everything is possible, you know, there are no where all these great things, huh? There are no boundaries. Yeah, like everything is possible. Like, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about money. Your friends are there. You're loved ones, your family. And it just it's just a really good place to be. But then again, you have to understand that where you are in life right now, you shouldn't take that for granted. Because there are things in your life right now that are important at that moment. And so yeah, that's why it says, you know, how the hell do I get back to me? Because once you're in a really um, great place and you kind of forget where you were it's a lot of people forget where they come from and I hope I never do that if I get to be to a place you know that is successful and stuff like that you know I hope I remember where I came from and I think I will I think you because will. yeah uh family tables is a different sound yeah it's more of a yeah. pop, pop electronic sound um yeah what and the thing that I, or the the main um, message I get from that song is why can't we move on? Why why can't yeah. why can't we move on? Yeah, I I wrote that song about running away from my family um, and being part of other people's families, and it was really about finding home 
you know, for me as a person and as a, as a family member, um, I've always looked at family like in a really negative way. Cause, uh, it's like when I grew up, like, you know, I ran away when I was 15. Right. Um, that was something I just had to get away from. So being in families, you know, I was kicked out of homes, you know, I was kicked out of my own aunt's house. Like when I moved in with her, like she kicked me out. Um, I was, uh, living in houses that I just met at a party, you know, uh, and they were just like, Hey, come stay with us for a while. So I'd stay with them for like a few months. And so that, that song is really the title of the song really explains what the song is about family tables. And it's like, can I set the family table? You know, am I part of this family, you know? And it's like, now, now I'm in a place where I feel like family, like I'm with the Van Loos right now. Um, Clarcha Van Loos, my manager, she's right. also become my best friend. Um, she, she took me in like 12 years ago. Um, I'm really bad with time, but it goes fast. Just in. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I've got 40 yeah. years. Wait till you, wait till you, that did not happen, you know, yeah. 30 years ago or was that 20 years? Yeah. It doesn't get exactly. any, it doesn't get any easier. Well, what a, gift, yeah. what a gift though, to be able to, yeah. to, um, process all of this in, in, mm -hmm. in, within the confines of a song so that, yeah. can, so that it can be shared with other people that, that may be able to relate to it, um, in the, right. in, in their own way. Um, mm -hmm. you, you have probably experienced, part of the music industry or more of the music industry than a lot of the artists that are based here in the heartland that, you know, have their Joe jobs or whatever, and, and, and try to play on the weekends or in the evenings or whatever you've been exposed to more of the so-called music business or music industry. Uh, do you have, yeah. an, do you have an opinion about what will or should come next for the music industry? I still think that the music um is uh like what other people think it should be like how it should be controlled and you know spotify doesn't give you any anything you know it's really hard to make a living as an artist man it sure is. i really i really think that it should go back to the artists like um it doesn't feel like it is it doesn't feel like the music industry is for the artists it feels like it's uh for the plays and like how often you show yourself to to the world and what you're doing and you know i've never been really good with tiktok um tiktok is a really big thing right now you know showing videos and i always feel like i'm on display you know, like if I'm in front of a camera and stuff like that, I feel like music needs to come back and not be as disposable as it, as it is right now. Well, it is, it is you about know? metrics and analytics for sure. Yeah. I mean, as someone who is on the radio and has been on it for a while now, I, I've been on about 13 years, the way that music, yeah. the music, the way that music comes to me from the industry yeah. is a lot different than it was before. But yeah, when I get the one sheets, it's all about, oh, they've got this many likes on on Instagram or they've had this yeah. many spins on Spotify. Um, yeah. that's, that's what half the one sheets are composed of right now. Um, but I'm, yeah. school, you know, I want to listen to my set for myself. I want to dig down into their catalog. I want to yeah. listen lyrics to their songs. Right. Um, so I'm right. I, I'm with you on that. I I and I think that for me personally. I mean, I've been around for a long time and I went to the big festivals, mm -hmm. the big concerts when I was young. I much prefer mm -hmm. these days a listening room experience or a house concert yeah. where I can yeah. make eye contact with the artist, talk to them after totally. the show. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, I that. I'm sure that it's uh, it's a heady thing to, st to stand up there on a stage and on a big yeah, people and look out and see thousands of people and know that that might convert to likes on Instagram or whatever. But right, like it's it's good that the fans get to see a lot more of you. You know that that part is really cool. And um, 
I just think that music is coming second. <laughs> that it's it's more about the uh, it's it's more about like what you put out there, like video and um, stuff like that. That's just what I think. That's personally what I've what I've kind of seen in the industry and how it works. You know, like it's all about the likes and it's all about you know the views and. You write every day. Um, no, I don't write every day. I write a lot. Um, if I write every day, my music starts sounding the same. Yeah. So I'll be like, oh, that's a hook that I had two days ago, you know, because I've tried that. I've tried to write every day. You know, last year, um, I wrote about 60, 60 songs that I kept. Um, so out of like maybe a hundred some songs that I actually wrote, I kept about 60. So I'm writing enough and I have enough, you know, material for the years to come. Well, you're probably one of these artists that your antenna is up, you know, all the time. Yeah. And hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully there's a way to, you know, capture the, when it comes the I call it pixie dust. <laughs> as it falls, yeah. out, it falls yeah. out of the ether and you and you catch it you know yeah. that you you yeah. you write it down in some way whether it's talking into the voice recorder on your phone or right or um yeah what can the heartland area what can we do heartland song network what we can what can we do better to help support artists like you and create a stronger platform for you to be creative What's the biggest thing missing from the puzzle right now? I don't know. I think you're doing a really good job. Um, I mean, are there enough places for you to play? I mean, is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like you can oversaturate yourself if you're not careful. There's so many places to play. Um, you know, it's as an artist, you want to you want to show as much as you're as much as you can of what you're doing in in your career but you also want to spread it out you know a young person 18 20 years old comes up to you and asks for your advice not not on the music business but as a songwriter you know that the, yeah. they might have a hard time getting organized in their thoughts or in their process um, what advice would you give a young songwriter that's just starting out? Um, I would, I would probably tell them to write what you know. Um, what you know is authentic and it comes across as real and, uh, you can make that in anything you want. You can make it into a story. You can make what your example of, um, what you went through, you can turn that into a song and people can relate to it because they've gone through it. So it's really hard to make up scenarios that aren't real. Um, so I'd say just, you know, if you're starting out and trying to get a, get a name for yourself, just write what you know. That's something that I've always learned. Do you have other creative pursuits? I mean, do you do you paint? Do you write poetry? Do you journal? What What other... Do you have any other creative pursuits? Um, mostly, mostly it's music. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it's, I, I like movies. I love movies and I love series. You know, I'm really wanting to watch this one Wednesday. I'm really wanting to see that one. There's a, that, there's a <laughs> lot of, there's a lot of, what do they call it? Spin out there about that. I don't, I, you know, yeah. I, I have found that my attention span has contracted since COVID. I thought I was going to get all of this. Oh, really? I thought I was going to get all this reading done, you know, all these books yeah. that been sitting on my shelves for years and all of these uh -huh. series that are out there to watch. I thought, Oh, well, you know, my attention span, I don't know whether it's because I'm, I'm on social media too much and my scrolling attention is, has messed around with my ability to read a story or to be oh. engaged more than 10 or 15 minutes. I'm, I'm personally, yeah. personally going to have to, to work on that. Um, oh, same. I, I used to read, like when I was a kid, I was grounded all the time. So I would be like reading all the time, like 
every single chance I got, I'd be reading something like Treasure Island, you know, the Hardy Boys, you know, I'd be, I'd just be reading the Cat Who books, you know, I Goosebumps, you know, whatever I could get my hands on, you know, I'd read. I don't read that much anymore. Like yeah. it's, it's my attention span, like you said, just kind of goes out the window. And I tried to read Jurassic Park a few, a few weeks ago because I wanted to see what the book was compared to the movie. Yes. It was something really, really um, it's a lot more gory <laughs> than the movie, but it was, it was good. It, but there's a lot of like backstory to stories, you know? So they're like, every time they bring up a new character, they're always talking about what they're wearing and how, how they act and, you know, just the surrounding environment. And my attention span goes right out the window. Yeah. <laughs> like when it comes. Yeah, I found yeah. That that's that's my problem too. I, I'm not. No matter how great this the the adjectives are, or how colorful mm. the language is, I'm ha I'm really having a hard time. Sounds like we both need to work on that. Who are you listening to yeah. right now? When you're in the, if you're in the car or on a trip, um, who might I might I be surprised at who you're listening to, or who would you recommend to me as someone who's on the radio that's always looking for new music? What what are you listening to? What you got? Well, I'm listening to, uh, you ever heard of Bad Sons? Nope. Bad Sons is a pop rock group. They're really good. Are they from? I like here? them. Harry Styles. Yeah, Harry. I don't know where they're from. Yeah, Harry Styles is good. Um, Miley Cyrus. I listened to her album, Plastic Hearts. It's really good. Um, Borns. I love Borns. Dopamine, the album Dopamine is really good. You know, um, yeah, that's okay. mostly duly yeah. noted. Duly noted. Mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised sometimes that what people have got in their own playlist, you know, or in there. What's what's the first music you ever bought with your own money? Oh, that was a uh, Nirvana by uh, uh, Nirvana. Uh, what was the name of it? Nevermind by Nirvana. And your first concert experience. My first concert experience was a Christian rock group called Disciple. Disciple. Yeah. I've never gotten the same answer. I mean, I can't believe how many times I've asked that question, but I do because I never get the same answer. And sometimes yeah. the answers are completely surprising. You know, yeah. so what they, uh, well, it's been lovely talking to you this afternoon. I hope that um, I hope that you stay here in the heartland and that we're able to give you what you need in order to survive and thrive here. And it's been an, it's been an honor to have you as our artist of the month for you. Our mission is to um, empower the art of songwriting through education, collaboration, and mentorship. And yeah. I think that you are a good example of someone who has, you know, stuck, stuck with it. It's constantly being creative, uh, has connections, knows how to network. Um, mm. And I personally can't wait to see what you're going to do next. And thank you. Uh, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do. Okay. All right. Have a thank, great rest of your thank day. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. Have a great day. Bye.